Hey, Silly Gurke hier auf sillyhuhn.com, dem gratis erreichbaren Minecraft-Server. Äh, alternativ hat er auch die IP 149.202.137.134 und wir schauen jetzt weiter mit dem Full Ethical Hacking Kurs von The Cyber Mentor auf dem Freecode Camp Channel. Link wie immer in der Beschreibung. Brauchen wir noch was zu entscharten? Wahrscheinlich nicht, oder? Okay. Dann let's go. Auf geht die Reise. <lacht> Ne, wir schauen jetzt das Video weiter, ne? also wenn okay. ihr wissen wollt, was davor passiert ist, dann so. schaut am besten das Video und nicht die Folge davor. Okay, es macht einfach gar keinen Sinn, diese Videos zu verfolgen. Improper configuration where a user has access. I have this in a recent internal pen test. Uh, I cracked a user password, and the user happened to have access to, um, you know, just one server. It was just one server, but that server allowed uh, me to navigate to the domain controller. So you want as limited access as you can and least privilege, right? Um, so what we're going to do, though, is we're going to demonstrate an environment where they're allowing their users to have. Um, some administrative privileges on multiple machines and that's how we're going to be able to do this relay here. So let's go ahead and right click on this. We're going to go into computer management again. And we're going to go into local users and groups. We're going to click on groups again. Double click administrators. And we're going to add an administrator here of Frank Castle. I can spell it. Okay, and apply that. So now he's part of the local admin. We're going to come in. We're going to go to this PC. We're going to go to the C drive. We're going to right click and we're going to create a new folder. We're going to call it scan. Same thing, no different. We're going to right click on that. Go to properties, sharing. We're going to share this sucker. Okay, we've got administrators have read write, administrators built in have uh, ownership. Just to make sure we're not missing anything, we're going to give F Castle his own as well. And we're going to give him full read write. And we're going to share that. Wow, 10 out of 10. Sharing, we should have SMB open on the machine. Do I often see domain admin user accounts separated from IT staff? No, I have seen that one time. Uh, it made it a lot more difficult to exploit the environment, but we still ended up doing it. However, they were doing a great job with that. Uh, we were able to capture their like, you know, their base IT accounts. But their domain admin accounts had really, really long password policy, uh, and it was it was fantastic to, to actually see an environment like that. But you don't see that a lot. All right, we're gonna go to Cali now. And we're going to find responder again. I think it's in user share responder. Actually, yeah, so uh, mine is in Yo, was ist denn das für eine Säule hier? Okay, and we need to make an edit here. So what we're going to do is we're going to gedit responder.com. We're going to edit the configuration here. We need to turn a couple things off. We're not going to be starting an SMB server, nor are we going to be starting an HTTP server. So make sure 
sure, again, SMB, oops, SMB is off, and HTTP is set to off. Okay, we're going to save that. Now we're going to fire up Responder, and that looks something like Python responder.py, and then we say dash i e zero dash rdw. Okay. The firewall should not need to be off for PS exam. So, okay, here we are. Now let's talk about the situation again. We've got the HTTP server off, we've got the SMB server off. We are sitting here listening for events to happen. Okay, when a hash comes through like it did last time, we're going to use another tool called NTLM Relay X, and we're going to use that to relay the NTLM hash. We never have to crack this hash. We're going to take the hash, pass it to a, uh, an SMB, and try to gain access that way. This is where SMB signing is important. If you have SMB signing disabled, which it is in most environments, this is a killer, right? So what we're gonna do here, we're gonna create a new tab, and we're gonna say locate, and we're just gonna find, I don't know where it's at, it's gonna be in a different folder, NTLM relay x dot pi. Okay, it's gonna be in the impacted folder. Uh, so we're going to say uh, cd opt in packet examples. Okay. Now we're going to fire up NTLM relay. So you say Python NTLM relay x dot pi. Actually, I got ahead of myself. Um, we have a target that we need to specify in a text file here. Uh, so if we ls, I've got a target dot text. If we go in here and we just say cat target dot text, it is 138. I don't know if it's 138, but we're going to have to make a, a file for it. So give me one second. We say command it config. It is 138 still. So make sure you have a file with your address for the machine of Peter Parker. Okay, so we're going to say python ntlm relay x.py dash tf target.txt. I like to put in smb2 support. Fire that guy. Now that guy's going to sit there, listen for the ntlm relay, and then it's going to relay it to the machine that you're choosing. Now remember how we did this last week? We're going to fire a hash off to ourselves. Let's go ahead and log in as actually Frank to Frank's machine and pray that this works. Live demonstrations are always the hardest. I wonder if that DNS issue just caused it to relay. It did not. There was poison. Okay. Uh, let's try. Let's try just pointing it. So point it towards your attacker machine. Let's go back to Cali, wherever that is. Am I not on 128? Oh, wait, it happened. It did happen, actually, in the, the initial. Okay, so we did relay. We did relay. So if you come in here, it takes the connection from 134 and it attacks 138. You can see that Marvel F Castle succeeded with authentication, F Castle had access to 138. Now, automatically it comes in here and it says, what can we do? Well, it's gonna dump the local SAM hashes. Now we have the SAM hash for administrator and for Peter. So we're gonna go in and we're gonna try to log in with this hash on the computer to gain access. 
We're also going to try to pass these hashes around to see what we can do. We're going to try to take this offline and crack it if we have to, uh, to gain access to the machine. Now, this is an example of NTLM Relay. My challenge to you, and I said I was going to challenge you to do something, you can take this further. You can actually get a full shell from this doing something called SMB Relay. Same concept, uh, just a different, little bit different tool set. So that is my challenge to you. If you're doing this lab and you have successfully relayed, now take it and see if you can get a shell. You're going to have to do some Googling, figure things out, try a little bit harder, you know, whatever the fun lingo is. But that's my challenge now, is to, to try to get a shell off this, either with a interpreter or with using Empire, uh, and, and see how far you can get. But this is the proof of concept that we can actually access the machine and dump the local SAM file. So um, very, very cool technique to use, especially if you're not getting anywhere with the actual responder, the password cracking. So Ruri's giving out hints. He says Empire is the thing he uses for this. Yes, Empire is likely the way to go. If you look up most articles on how to do it, Empire is going to be in there. You may find one or two with um, Interpreter, but it does not hurt to learn Empire. So uh, that is my challenge. That is it. And this lesson is officially over right at 930. So again, if you guys want to see round three of this, I am happy, happy, happy to do that. Um, please just upvote on active and upvote on blue. We'll do that. It'll probably be half of a week next week. And what we'll do, we're half of a session, and then we'll dive into whatever, whatever we're missing. I don't remember what we're missing. Uh, we'll probably start into our pivoting lab, or we may cover the legal stuff and do a pivoting lab at the end. Um, i got to figure out how I want to do that. So I really do want to do a capstone. We'll, we'll see if we can do a capstone, or we'll just do capstone lessons uh, for a couple weeks after the course ends. Um, and that way you guys can get a feel for what my enumeration process is and how I really look through things. Uh, so that'll be fun. What's up, everybody? So tonight we had some technical difficulties with Hack the Box. We were having some issues getting, uh, you know, pings coming back and a connection to the boxes. When we did get connection to the boxes, we had uh, just disconnects happening. We eventually had to change VPN connections a couple of times. So what you're going to see is a couple of hard cuts in videos. I, I did my best tonight to edit the video down to where it made the most logical sense as well as took out all of the technical difficulties that we encountered. So if you were a part of the live stream and you watched it live, thanks for sticking with me. You guys are awesome. If you're catching it on the recording, hopefully I did a good enough job to patch things up and you don't really notice the difficulties. But if you do see some hard cuts, uh, just understand that we were having a lot of issues getting connection to Hack the Box. So without further ado, here is uh, episode 10. Part three of Active Directory Exploitation. All right, it is 8.02. I am done stalling, you guys. Don't have a lot of PowerPoint. Got a whole three slides for you. Press my handy dandy new button. Boom. All right, so week 10, we are in the penultimate week. Next week is the last week. So we've got some quick housekeeping tonight, AD Exploitation Part 3, and Q&A AMA. Oops, we have a timer on it, but there's red, blue, green, purple, pink. Be here. So I am on Hack the Box right here. I am on the tab, if you go over the left side, I clicked on Retired. And... Now you can see that last week I asked you to vote for blue, which you did, thank you. And I asked you to vote for active, which you did, thank you. I've gone ahead and just recently reset both machines on my network. Um, if you're on VIP, you're gonna be able to follow along. If you're not, you're just gonna have to watch. 
So with VIP, there are different segments of the VPN, so hopefully my resetting of the box um, is on a different segment of yours. But you can see I reset active 12 minutes ago, and blue was reset 17 minutes ago. So for time saving purposes, what we're going to do is we're going to scan both of these, and then we're going to work on blue first, and then work on active second. So let's go ahead and just get our scans kicked off. I'm going to open up two new tabs here and get these blown up. And then we are just going to end map these suckers. And blue sits at 10.10.10.40. .10 .10 hmm. Leute, and was active macht man denn da? Das können wir wieder gut scheren machen, den Rest brauchst du eigentlich nicht, ne? Ein paar Blöcke sind wertvoller als ein paar Äpfel. Uh, IP is down, nice. So I've been having issues with active today being consistently up or down and it looks like, <laughs> looks like blue is down as well. So we may have to give it a second may have to toggle connection. Hopefully you're having a little bit better luck than I'm having. Let me toggle my connection here. All right, so if you recall last time, we said, I gave you this link, I've been giving this link throughout uh, the course, right? And it's been the top five ways I got domain admin on your internal network before lunch. Um, We've talked about LLM and R poisoning and NetBIOS poisoning. We talked about relay attacks. We keep scrolling. Okay, MS17010, that's what we're gonna be talking about next. This is what blue is about. If you see, it deals with eternal blue, eternal champion, eternal romance, etc. This was the uh, shadow brokers exploit that was stolen from the NSA, I believe and uh, turned into things like the WannaCry exploit, the ransomware. Uh, basically, it's just a, a very, very you know, nasty exploit that transverses your system. And this is one of those, uh, those things that sit out there unpatched on a lot of networks, uh, mostly internal, right? If you see this on the external and it hasn't been exploited yet, very unlikely, but... Um, Internal networks leave this all the time. Think about a machine that's running some sort of legacy software that can't be updated off of you know, a certain Windows version. People are just lazy on their patching. Uh, for whatever the reason, uh, this is still sitting out there in a lot of networks. So, let's see where we're at, 99.99. So we're gonna review the scan and see um, not only not only what we're uh, going to be exploiting, but we'll talk about what we would see just from a pen tester point of view, what is interesting to us with this scan. Um, if you want to pull up, I've also got the security bulletin here for MS17010. You scroll through it, you know, it talks about that it's an SMB exploit, uh, it talks about all the operating systems that are vulnerable. It's pretty much most of them, the initial exploits that, that came through were for like oh Windows 7 God. and Windows 2012. Um, there's certain service packs that are exploitable, like service pack one, uh, and you you start you know looking through these and you see oh Windows 7 service pack one, that is uh, you know that's interesting. Maybe I should see if Eternal Blue or MS17010 is on that, right? Um, and you same thing with like Windows 8 or Windows 2012. I think it's R2. Uh, you, you look through these and you say, yeah, CR2 on here, and you just want to know, you know what you can exploit. So I'll show you how to confirm before we actually run an exploit that it might be vulnerable and what steps we're going to need to take as well. And this thing really likes to sit at 99. Let's see where we're at over here as well, 17%. Somebody asks, how does it get infected if it's not exposed internally? Um, so the big way that the ransomware gets in is typically through phishing. So if we're talking like WannaCry, I've experienced WannaCry firsthand as a uh, as a help desk person. That was fun. 
So, I mean, you, you uh, basically, anybody who opens a malicious file, that file is going to download on the computer and then it's going to start searching through the network, right? It's going to look for SMB open. If SMB is open, it's going to try to navigate to other computers through the network and exploit as many as it can. It'll start encrypting the files and uh, you know that's how you get ransomware. So it can self-navigate through a network um, and that's, in terms of an infection, that's one way of doing it. If we're talking an internal penetration test, as long as you're on the network, regardless of how we got on, uh, so we've been assuming internal network access for three weeks now. So regardless of how you're in the network, these are one of the easiest machines to, to drop. Let's see what it came back with. This really didn't do a good job. Um, your scan is likely going to look way different than my scan is. Uh, Typically, when I've scanned this before and run this before, it gives us quite a bit of information um, on, on what's behind not only um, port 139 and port 45, but it'll say what service type we're running. It'll say, uh, you know, it, it even tells us, I think the name, yeah, like Harris PC. You would see more than that. Oh. For some reason, it's picking up that like there's a, a port in a firewall. I don't know what's going on with the hack the box tonight, but this is all. This is probably not going to happen to you. I'm just getting unlucky. Okay, that's uh, why I need some So, news. typically, we have some script results down here that'll tell us a little bit more also of the information that it picks up. It should be picking up some sort of Windows information in terms of the OS. The SMB is going to tell that out. Uh, so, really, that's what we're going to look at. There's another thing on here, too, where SMB was unsigned. If you see that, that's obviously a finding because we can do relay attacks like we talked about last week. Uh, unfortunately, it's not, it's not working out for us. Um, so, what we're going to do is we're going to pretend that we saw the scan and the scan came back with some information. Um, and we have deduced that there may be a potential uh, exploit here. Okay, Leute, ich würde sagen, das war's dann für diese Episode. Ähm, nicht vergessen, auf diesen gratis erreichbaren Minecraft-Server zu connecten und hier aktiv zu spielen. Der wird wahrscheinlich auch noch, wenn ihr dieses Video in einigen Jahren seht, online sein. Ähm, wie ihr seht, äh, nicht viel los hier. Gelegentlich kommt mal jemand vorbei. 20 Slots, also ihr werdet hier immer äh, einen Platz finden auf entspannter Basis. Ähm, das Video ist wie immer in der Beschreibung verlinkt. Und wir sehen uns dann in der nächsten Episode.